Welcome to Ra Online. Today's topic is fibroids in subfertility. Uterine myomas, leomyomas or fibroids are the most common tumor of the reproductive tract with a cumulative incidence of 70% in women of reproductive age group. Fibroids are benign monoclonal tumors. They are associated with most severe symptoms in the women of African descent because they are larger in size and they are associated with high FSH and LH or high levels of gonadotropins. Compared with Caucasian women with symptomatic myomas, women of African descent typically present at younger age and with significant worse myoma burden. Now, we have a list of decreased risk and increased risk. Decreased risk of myomas is seen with increasing parity, increased age at the last term birth, women with at least two full term pregnancies. There is decreased risk with smoking, slim or leanness, exercising individuals. Decreased risk is seen with ossicles, vegetable and fruit intake and decreased risk is seen with dietary vitamin A intake. Increased risk is associated with obesity, nulli gravida, late childbirths, African race, early menarche, alcohol and beer intake, postmenopausal HRT is associated with increased risk of fibroids, red meat or ham consumption, in utero dithyl stilbestrol exposure, soya intake in infancy, premature birth, maternal pre-pregnancy or gestational diabetes and low socioeconomic status in childhood are associated with increased risk of myomas. 5 to 10 percent cases of infertility are associated with myomas. However, myomas are the sole factor for infertility only in 1 to 3 percent of cases. Any condition that increases estrogen is associated with increased risk of fibroids and caffeine consumption is not a noted risk factor for fibroids. The use of ossipils is not associated with increased risk of myoma, but the nurses health study reported a slightly increased risk when ossipils were first used in early teenage years. As such, OCP is associated with decreased risk of myomas, but if somebody takes ossipils in early teenage years, then the nurses health study a report showed that it associated with increased risk, but there can be other confounding factors. Coming to the FICO classification of leomyoma, so we have 0 to 8, 0 to 2 are submucosal, 3 to 8 are others. Among the submucosal fibroids, we have 0 pedunculated intracavitary fibroid, 1 which is less than 50 percent intramural, 2 which is more than 50 percent intramural, 3 which Con contacts the endometrium and it is 100% intramural, 4 is an intramural myoma, 5 is a subserosal myoma which is more than 50% intramural, 6 is a subserosal myoma which is less than 50% intramural, 7 is a subserous pedunculated and 8 is the other varieties. And then there are hybrid uh, leomyomas which impinge both on the endometrium and in the serosa and they are classified as 2 to 5 submucosal and subserosal each with less than half in diameter in the endometrial and peritoneal cavities respectively. So sometimes there can be given two numbers and they are listed separated by the hyphen and by convention the first refers to the relationship with the endometrium and the second refers to the relationship with the serosa. The first fibroid is relationship with the serosa and the second number is relationship with the first is relationship with the endometrium and the second number is relationship to the serosa. So, one fibroid can have two numbers separated by a hyphen. This is the uh, leomyoma subclassification syndrome and this is a myoma which is for example 2, 5. So, 2 is the endometrial grade and 5 is the serosal relationship grid. FIGO0 is a pedunculated submucosal fibroid. It is widely recognized as submucosal fibroids are associated with decreased pregnancy rates and implantation rates after IVF treatment. Conversely, subserosal fibroids do not affect IVF outcomes. The impact of intramural fibroids on the outcome of IVF ICSI treatment remains incompletely understood.